everybody doing good today? It's about 1.30, um, and like NGM, we like to start our meetings on time, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Nora Roper. I'm the assistant plant manager at the Corvette plant, so I have the pleasure of working there every day and running the day-to-day -day business. So I've got some things to share with you on some process improvements that we've made in the plant, and i got some really cool videos as well. So we're going to talk about what's new in the plant. This is focused on the plant processes. And every meeting within General Motors, we start with a safety message. So we're going to start our, our, our uh, my presentation today again with a safety message. And I got kind of a serious topic to talk with you for a few minutes, and it's about distracted driving. And when you look at the statistics, it's not so good. Every day, about nine people lose their lives in traffic accidents which are caused by distracted driving. So I encourage you when you're driving, put your phones down and keep your eyes up. Now, Andy Pilgrim, some of you know him, he's a, he's a great guy. We know him because he's a race car driver. We know him because he's a former Corvette race team driver. And of course, he's a Hall of Famer too, right here at the Corvette Club, or the Corvette Museum. And, but there's something that I learned about Andy here recently. In the 90s, he started looking at a way to give back to the community, a way to give back to here, being here in the States, and he wanted to give back. And he started a foundation. <coughs> it's called the Traffic Safety Education Foundation. And it's focused on new drivers and parents and teachers and children and teaching them what's important about driving and not being distracted when you're driving. And he's got some public service announcements that I've seen that are really impressive. And that's why I support Andy's foundation. And I encourage you to do the same. Okay, a little bit about our products. I know most of you know that of course we started with a Stingray and then the Z06, Grand Sport, and this year the ZR1. And of course we have that in both coupe and convertible. This year the ZR1. The most powerful, fastest, most powerful, most advanced production Corvette ever built. And I gotta tell you, for the last eight months I've been driving a ZR1. It's awesome. It's a seven-speed manual, 755 horsepower. It's so well balanced, the steering, the braking, it's just a, the ultimate in Corvettes. And I've been driving Corvettes for over five years, so I've had the privilege of driving. This is probably my eighth or ninth Corvette, but I gotta tell you, the ZR1 is really awesome. So we've got a little video here, and I just wanna prep you with what you're gonna see. So we start out, and we're in our chassis area, and you'll see the engine compartment, and the team members are doing some assembly around that engine. But take notice of the supercharger, because with the ZR1, the supercharger is larger, and that is why we have the shaker hood. So it's gonna end uh, with the car on the flat track, and then finally that shaker hood that goes on. So let's take a look at this first video.
three hour one. And then the Sebring orange turned out to be a very popular color. It's actually 34% of the ZR1s that we built are orange, believe it or not. Who would have thought? Um, I want to recognize Rachel Bagshaw. She is our communications manager. She took these videos. We're going to see a number of videos here in the next hour. She took those videos and then she matches some of the music to them. So I just want to recognize Rachel for the work that she's done. Let's talk about engines now. So, of course, we, we know the engines in our Corvettes. It, it starts with the LT5. Whoops, I got it right. Okay. So, the LT5, 6.2 liter V8, it's the whole family of small block V8 engines. Of course, it has a larger supercharger, it's about 52% larger than the supercharger on the LT4. That produces um, 755 horsepower. Now the engine is actually producing more horsepower than that because it takes 110 horsepower just to run the supercharger. So that, that engine is actually putting out 865 horsepower and, and 715 pound foot of torque. The LT5s are hand built in our performance build center. So what that means is the engine builder starts on, with the engine cart and puts the block on and he, he or she stays with that engine from station to station to build the entire engine. And then at the end of the process, they put their nameplate on that engine. Great sense of pride that we have in the Performance Build Center. And again, we've got a little a video to share with you.
which exhaust system you have, it could be 460 horsepower or 460 pound foot of torque. Some of the LT1s are built in our performance center. Most of them are built now at our St. Catharines engine uh, assembly plant. So we, we chose um, to pick up some of the volume for the LT1s so that we could maintain the same workforce in our performance build center. So we're able to fill in some of that other volume with the LT1s. Okay, we had a big announcement back in March for our engine area. Um, we are going to add another engine to the Performance Build Center. It's a Cadillac engine, exclusive for Cadillac. It's a 4.2 liter twin turbo V8. Uh, there'll be two versions. There'll be a 550 horsepower version and then a 500 horsepower version. So we're in the process of bringing that online. So more business for our performance build center. We're excited about that. We also, in January, we reopened the Build Your Own Engine customer. If you are an LT, uh, a Z06 or a ZR1 customer, you have the option to do Build Your Own Engine. Uh, the chief engineer for Small Block V8 is Jordan Lee. He came in January and he walked through the process, built an engine. Uh, this year, for the 2019 model year, we had 55 Build Your Own Engine customers. 46 of the 55 were LT5's ZR1 customers. When we have the customers in, it's really a special day for them. It's also a special day for our engine builders. So they spend the entire day with that Build Your Own Engine customer. They actually start building a relationship, and many times we find there's a connection between the Corvette customer and the engine builder, and they, you know, link up Facebook, other, you know, social media um, outside of work, and they become friends. So it is really uh, special for both the customer and for our engine builders. Okay, uh, so we build the engine in the performance build center. Uh, like other assembly plants, we have an engine dress area. So in this area, we're going to take the engine and we're going to add some additional parts, such as pulley, tensioner, the starter, the belts. So we have a short video here I'm going to share with you of our engine dress line as part of the Corvette side of the house. Um, about a year or so ago, we changed this assembly line. Now the engine is on a pallet, and the pallet moves on the conveyor. So let's watch the video.
performing all those tasks and ensuring the quality of the engines and the Corvettes that we built. Okay, a little sneak peek. As you know, last summer we were down for three months and uh, we spent some money in our general assembly area on a hundred million dollar investment and basically every conveyor in general assembly was either new or modified. So I'm going to walk you through the uh, new process. I know a number of you have been in the plant so I'll kind of, so hopefully some of this will be a reminder and I'll point out some of the changes. So let's start over, let's see if this pointer here will work. You can kind of see a little bit of this light green. This is the trim area. So again, you know, our uh, car starts with the 100% aluminum frame in our body shop, and we put the cockpit in, um, in the body shop, and we also have the main body wiring harness in there. And then it comes down the ramp into the trim area. So that's a, very much the same as before, where we're working kind of in the back of the car. We're adding uh, brackets, we put the battery in, uh, then it, it continues down. We've got the radiator going in here. We've got carpets going in. And then right about here is where we now put in the windshield glass. And then it goes around the corner. And then this is what's, here's something that's new, a VDL, a vertical displacement lift. So as it's being built on the trim truck, as we call it, then it goes here and it gets raised up and the car goes on the three rail carrier so it's being carried overhead. So that's what's coming here. At the same time we have our cockpit area. Our cockpit area is now built on a small skillet and those skillets are moved by an AGC, automatic guided cart. And we have two legs to the cockpit area so that's what's going on here and then cockpits make their way over to the body shop where they get installed into the body. Over here is now our chassis subassembly area. Previously it was on a what we call a tow bayer. Now it is automatic guided vehicles. So the automatic guided vehicle starts here. We saw the engine dress, so the engine would get put in this area. So all the chassis subassembly as it's moving along the automatic guided vehicle and it makes its way over to marriage. At the same time, we talked about how the car is on the three rail, uh, the gas tanks get put in here, and then it goes to marriage. Out of the marriage, then it goes around chassis, goes up and around and comes back down to chassis three. Once it, after chassis three, now we go to the skillet area. And this is again a new part of the conveyor system in our general assembly area. Skillets are not unique to Bowling Green Assembly. It's something that we have in some of our other assembly plans. It, uh, it, it helps the builder, and of course, if it helps the builder, it helps the car, right? So the, a skillet is like a platform that the car is mounted on, and the platform is riding on a conveyor. And the operator is able to stand with the car, and he's moving automatically with the car because he's standing on the platform. The car is mounted on like an accordion where we can raise or lower the car to adjust it that's the best for that part of the assembly. So it's better ergonomically for the team member and ultimately better for the quality, better for the customer, for the Corvette owner. So it, it goes from chassis to uh, and it comes off of the three rail and it's mounted onto the skillet and the car is actually, the rear of the car is first, so it's like it's traveling backwards <laughs> down skillet one, it gets shuttled over and then it goes forward down skillet two, after skillet two, another lift, now it's back on the three rail and back down through chassis. This is much the same. We have tire and wheel assembly. It goes around the corner for fluid fill. We have our chassis gate, and then it goes onto the flat track. It's the first time the car is on all four wheels, and then we have our final assembly, so that, that portion is, is the same. So I think I've got a video next. Oh, old versus new. We're going to start with marriage. So we have kind of the old way, and then on the right side it will be the new way. And pay attention to the music.
I have a tremendous amount of respect for the team members that build our engines and our Corvettes, but especially those working in marriage. There's four team members working together, and it's very important as that AGV and it's lifting up the chassis and the three rail overhead and everything coming together. They really, the four team members really have to work well together. So I give them a lot of credit. Okay, vertical displacement list of VDLs that you saw. I think we've got another um, VDL here.
you might know that GE <coughs> spent about a half a billion dollars on the paint shop. So let's take a look here. Uh, this uh, GK, Gallagher Kaiser, was a general uh, contractor. They have made the last several paint shops for GM. Uh, we're going to go into the video. I think we, we have, I'm going to do one more click. Yes. So this is uh, aerial view, obviously. This wider roof area, that's the new paint shop. This area here is the connector building. We call it the manifold building. It gave us an opportunity to have additional docks and uh, material storage. So then the darker colored area here is part of the uh, main building. This would have been the old paint shop over here. So about 250,000 square feet. The old paint shop, it's almost a million square feet when you look at the different levels and also the manifold building. So it's nearly a, a million square feet. Uh, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new
attach the panels, then we have the prime operation, we have wet sand, and then we go on to the color boost. All of that's done on the main floor. Above, we have a lot of transfer of the carriers and staging cell sequencing uh, conveyor lines. Okay, so here's some stats on the old versus the new workshop. We had 25 robots, now we have 43 robots. Those 25 robots were over 30 years old. They, they were out of their useful life. We had trouble finding spare parts. We had to go on eBay to get spare parts for those old robots. Now we have the latest technology. It's a total of 43. We didn't have a wet sand operation. Now we do, so there's six robots associated with that. As I talked about the old sludge, the water system that we had in the past, and now we have the limestone system. The size, it's four times bigger than the old paint shop. And then we have the old guns, and now we have the bell applicators. <laughs>
know that I'm a good. I know these employees by first name. And I gotta tell you, I've got 30 years with GM. This is my seventh GM location. And Bowling Green is special. The, the people here take great pride in building those engines and those Corvettes for you. And it's a pleasure to work with them. I'm so proud to be part of this team. Um, you saw in the video, there was an electrician. His first name is Tom. He was looking in the electrical panel. He was doing some predictive maintenance. He was looking for hot spots in the electrical panel in case something needed to be replaced or tightened. Oh, some other things. So we work really hard at Corvette, but we also have fun. And one of the things that we do is the Halloween uh, costume part. So, yes, that's me. You can guess who might have been in that Nightmare Soul suit. Yes, it was our plant director, Kai Spandy. <laughs> and we were having fun with the people. Here's some others that are dressed up there. Uh, we also do a ugly sweater contest. Um, we're involved involved in junior achievement with the mini Corvette races, and then we also do a golf scramble, uh, again, for charity. So we work hard, but we have fun, too. The employees have a voice. It's very important that we engage employees in the business, and there are several different ways that we do that. GMS stands for our Global Manufacturing System. Basket Weave is a type of meeting where we have team leaders and group leaders that attend the meeting and we're working on implementing the best system, which is the global manufacturing system. Also, safety. So we take time to sit down and talk to our employees about our safety culture. And we do that through what we call a safety culture interview. We also ask a team member within the team if they would volunteer to be what's called a safety star. So they raise their hand and they do safety observation tours once a week and get more involved in the safety and kind of representing the team in regards to safety. Protect the vet is really something that we coined and we want to recognize our employees when they're doing the right behavior. So they get Corvette swag, they get a t-shirt or a hat when we recognize them for doing the right things. PMN is our professional managers network. That's our for our group leaders, our first line supervisors. One of the toughest jobs in the plant is the first line supervisor. We want to pull them together and support them in the work that they do. We're always open to suggestions from all of our employees. Anything can be made better. And we want their ideas together, we can get better. And we always have the open door policy, always ready to listen how we can make things better. So we, we want to recognize the achievements along the way, and, and part, uh, part of that is a, you know, ice cream and pizza. Okay, community. So we want to reach out to our community here. So we've got a lot of activity, so a few slides on that. Um, we have Real Men Wear Pink, and this is Kai Spandy, our plant director. He's holding a pink one. 
And uh, many of us, um, we just take the time to um, give back to the cancer societies about breast cancer um, month. We really take the month of October to do that. These are some folks uh, related to United Way. We do a day of caring where we reach out to some organizations here in the community and we just work on it. Sometimes we paint, we fix things for them. We'll take a day. And uh, we typically work at hospice or brass, which is a safe place uh, for battered women. So that's what we've done here recently. <laughs> this is a group of young ladies. Uh, there's actually Girl Scouts from the area. And it's related to STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And our engineers do some demonstrations for the young girls, and we also do some hands-on activity. We're trying to encourage them to get involved in engineering. November is Movember, so it's really about men's health. And uh, we have some guys that, that choose to um, grow those mustaches. We have a little mustache contest during the month of November, and we got some trinkets, and the guys have a lot of fun with that. So it's just a little sampling of the things that we do with the plant. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be directly, but there's a lot of it. Yeah. 
the automatic guided vehicles, automatic guided cars. You can put any cart you want on there. And you can change the still on board for a bunch of people. So that was the beauty of the money that Jim spent on the General Assembly. You see those other points of building on school. In fact, he was the youngest guy in General Motors history to go unclassified 40 years ago. Yeah. Doug Edwards. Yeah. He started with Doug Cox. How do you get two of them in the assembly? Yeah, that's very true. We have uh, some small robots for uh, windshield glass and hatch glass and put the urethane on and then the operator takes the glass and, and installs it. So we only have a couple of robots in uh, general assembly because the, the nature of the work. In our body shop we have 90 robots and we have about 30 people. So the body shop is very different. And then you saw also in the paint shop we're having 43 robots in our paint shop. So just kind of the nature of body versus paint versus general assembly. But most of the general assembly work I think is best done. Less. So the electrostatic uh, bells do a better job. Also, we have a conductive prime that we put on the car. And with this new method, we are using about 25% less paint is waste. Okay. Before more overspray, more going into that water shower that ends up in the water sludge, 25% less. No, more on the car. More is getting on the car. We have to, there's requirements for control, so you have to know what is the prime thickness, what is the base coat, and what is the clear coat thickness. So there is actually, you know, we're well within, as we were before, we're still to specification, but we're wasting 25% I'm not going to say that there's more paint on the car. I'm going to tell you that we're more consistent with the paint on the car because of the technology of the new robots with the electric. We have not, GM has some standards, and we have always had to actually cut panels, and we check the thickness of the prime, the base, the clear coat. Um, we're able to do that more consistently with less waste. Yes? Dennis, the menace. <laughs> the new blue. Elkhart blue is the new blue. It replaces Admiral blue, and we will start in October. We are doing a shadow gray now. So we retired Watkins Glen gray, and now we have the dark shadow. Yep, good question. Yes? Assembly systems. We've had other, Detroit Hamtramck, um, I think they've had the opportunity to get skillets. Um, yes, yeah, some of the other assembly plants have also, um, just prior to us, uh, Flint uh, Assembly got a new paint shop. So yeah, GM looks at all of the age and, and equipment and what money is available to continue to improve our processes. And we have a built-up process, the best way to assemble a car or paint a car. Yep. And we also we continue to work towards that. John? At, at Hamtramck, they, they built uh, the Volt, they built the Impala, and they built the CT6 uh, Cadillac. Dennis, did you have another question? So, yeah, we had our build your own engine um, offer. Is that what you mean, build your own engine? Um, I don't know when we're going to be able to turn it back on. We just recently, the week before last, had our last um, build your own engine customer, and I, I don't have that date available. Okay, what else? Well, we have we have cold tests, and um, if your engine is paired with a manual transmission, it gets a hot balance, so it would be fired there. 
Um, it actually, right at the end of the line, we start it up and drive it off. Um, and also, during the static, when we're programming all the modules within the car, we actually start up the car there. So it's right after fluid fill, um, before the end of the line. Yep. It, uh, we don't print it out, but we have it available. So we know the VIN, we know the engine unit number, we know when it started up, we know all the, yeah, you know, we do keep all the data as we build the engine, and we keep the data as we build the car. Yeah. Oh, something that we can we can think about. We currently don't print it, but if we do have it available.